Patrick, I know how much you love when I ask about your health. And it had to be frustrating for you to, to miss those three games when it seemed like maybe you know, still on that upward uh, swing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, nah, it, it sucked, but, you know, health is most important. So you got to make sure you know you all the way healthy before you step on the field. And um, a, lot of, a lot of coaches always tell me you don't want to put out bad film. And so that's a big thing. So, I mean, if a... If I'm not 100%, I'm not, you know, going to be helping the team and, you know, the way I want to. And I feel like, or and the coaches feel like it's best, you know, that I just. Get back out there then and, and make an impact and have a sack on Saturday. I mean, uh, how much did that mean to you and, and, and where does it go from here? Um, it meant a lot, but it's just, uh, you know, it's just the beginning. Uh, Coach uh, always says, you know, we can always get way better than we are. You know, it's just that we're just scratching the surface. So I just keep that mentality you know, in the back of my, or in the front of my head. And, you know, always just try to look for something better, you know. I, I did get a sack, but it was it was a lot more rushes than I could have did better on. And I could have made a, a more of an impact, I thought. So, um, you know, I just did what I thought uh, I did. I did uh, what was in the game plan, you know, it worked for me. But, you know, this is the beginning. We still got a long season ahead of us, you know. We're all only going up from here. So I'm just trying to work on what I could do to, uh, you know, impact the team in a better way from all, here on out. Hi, Tyreek. Hey, obviously, this has been kind of a, a, probably a more challenging journey for you here in the last 12, 18, 24 months than maybe you mm -hmm. expected. When you think about everything that you've been through and how you've grown through that, what are you most proud of? Uh, I think I'm most proud of, you know, my faith. It's, uh, it's, it's been strong through it all. My mom, you know, always just telling me to just be, be, be humble, you know, but stay hungry and just always remain faithful. And, you know, just lean on God because, you know, God always has a plan. So that's just my thing. Like, God has a plan for everything, you know, whether I like it or not. You know, I always just trust in his plan. And, you know, every time I step on the field, uh, I'm going to use my God-given abilities. And I'm going to go as hard as I can, you know, within the scheme, you know, within uh, what I'm supposed to do. So that's what I just do. I just, you know, just let God handle it. I only could do what I can control. So I just go out there and, you know, play my hardest and if uh, – that's what's, what's, what's uh, the right thing to do, and that's what I'm, I'm going to do. Jeremy said that uh, he often thinks about the defining moments in this program as off-season challenges, yeah. things with Coach Marotti, things in, you know, mm -hmm. in camp. How often do you reflect on some of the tough times you guys go through to prepare yourselves for big games like this so yeah. that when Penn State comes here for a night game, you feel like you've done that before? Yeah. Um, a lot of times, you know, when – it's that fourth quarter, you know, you're tired and, you know, you're trying to look for some more energy in the tank. You go back and you think about those those times where you were using mat drills or, you know, those times where you got to go through those lifts, those times where you stepped up to the line thinking, dang, I'm, I'm so tired. I don't know how I'm going to do this uh, <laughs> this next rep, but you just do it anyway because, you know, it's just you, you turn that mental switch on in your head and that's kind of what Ohio State instills in you, that mental switch to, you know, to just push through anything because you're going to do it for your brother next to you, to the left and the right of you. So, yeah, I just think that's the biggest thing. Um, just, you know, just remembering all the training you did, you know, just remembering that you, what you're doing is not for nothing. Uh, second row right, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Uh, I would imagine that not playing as much as you wanted to earlier in the year has given you extra motivation for the home stretch. Could you just kind of address that and, and just your mindset as we enter this part of the season? Um, my mindset is just, you know, doing what I can for the team to make us, uh, you know, go one step forward with a dub. Um, so anything I could do, you know, I'm um, extra film, uh, you know, extra treatment, extra sleep. You know, maybe it's I got to say something to someone else. You know, I think they're not doing what they're supposed to do. You know, they got to pick it up. We're all brotherhood in here. So uh, it's not anybody. No one's going to get, you know, in their feelings about constructive criticism. So I just think the, the mindset we have is, you know, you know, we're not we're not where we need to be. We're a good team, but we can always be better, you know. And we, we came up short last year, so that's just always in our heads, too. So just to go as hard as we can, because we know we got to finish what we started. You know, we got to finish what, what, uh, what wasn't, wasn't finished last year. So that's what. Biggest reason for the defensive improvement since Oregon Tulsa to now? I think guys just buying in, you know, just just giving themselves up, you know. Just, um ripping themselves open and giving their hearts out for the for the brothers and for the love of the brotherhood. Uh, we we talked and 
you know, we knew we weren't playing uh, to the standard we needed to play. And, you know, we just had, you, sometimes you got to look in the mirror, you know, look at yourself and, and ask yourself, you know, can I, what can I do to do better for this team? Or what can I do to make myself better to better this team? So I think that was what was going on, a lot of that. Uh, I think it was a humbling experience, too, you know, the uh, one loss we took. You know, you're not going to always win, and sometimes the losses are what's going to help you, you know, get to the, the win. So I just think we took it as a learning lesson. We didn't we didn't dwell on it. You know, we just took it as a humbling experience. We came back, worked, and, you know, we're doing better now. So it was. Deep right, Spencer Holbrook. Excuse me, Letterman Rowe. Terry, Haskell said a couple of times throughout the year, and there's the ongoing competition between the defensive tackles and the defensive end. You guys played really well Saturday. Were you a little upset to find out that you guys had two and a half sacks and the defensive tackles also had two and a half sacks? Uh, nah. <laughs> nah, I'm never upset about that. I, I want all my guys to eat. Uh, so. I mean, the defensive tackles, they stepped up in a huge way. And, and it's never like you looking at it like, ah, oh, dang, he got a sack and I didn't. Um, a lot of the times, you know, even we're all working together. Everything's just like, you know, I feel like it's like a, a, a bike. Like everything's like a chain. And when there's one weak link in the chain, you know, that's when the bike messes up. So when the interior dudes are playing well, you know, we playing well, they make us play better. Uh, when they're putting pressure on the quarterback, they're forcing it out to us. When we're, you know, getting pressure on the outside and we're pushing it up to them, you know, we're, we're making it better for the uh, for the D tackle. So when we can, you know, we work together. We're brothers. We we go out there. We love playing with each other. And so we just always try to, you know, make each other better. And when someone gets some, uh, when someone gets a sack or someone gets a tackle, you know, we 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 all happy. We all feel like we got the tackle in that. Like some dominant defensive ends mm -hmm. before. Is there an advantage to having you know everybody the production spread out through everybody rather than you know one guy you know getting all the attention and you know, everyone else uh, you know getting what what he does? It? Yeah, uh, I mean, whatever way possible. I think I think the way we're going right now, everybody you know having an even uh, slate of uh, of stats. I think that. I think that's good. I mean, it shows that everybody is excelling and everybody's not staying stagnant and everybody's getting better. So, uh, like he just asked, uh, the team's getting better every game um, since since the uh, early season. So, I just think every game, you know, we're just going out there you know, trying to play hard, trying to play within the scheme, you know, trying to trying to get a win for our brothers. So, we're not only playing for ourselves on the D-line, but we're playing for the guys on the back end too. So. We're just, you know, trying to do our part in in, in what we can uh, do to win the game. So it's, it's really helping, and it's really it's really going good. Time for a couple more. We're going to go deep left. Dan Hope, eleven Warriors. Tyree, when you think about where you are in your career at this point, do you feel like you know you're pleased with what you've been able to accomplish here so far, or do you feel like there's still another level that the world hasn't seen from you yet? Yeah, I always think it's another level I could tap into. Um, you know, I'm just. I just go out there, like I should say, I, I, I let God handle it. I don't, I don't really think too much about that. Um, but I just, you know, I just go out there and try to give my 110%. So when I go out, when I leave the game, I feel like I did what I could, you know. As long as we're getting uh, wins and, and the team's doing good and, and the defense is doing good and we're, and we're still, still um, you know, playing and doing good and the chemistry's going good, then, you know, I'm fine with it. I'm cool with it. So my brothers are doing good. I'm just, I'm just kind of uh, smiling, it just makes me happy because I, I just know we're doing something right. You know, all these days in practice and we're going out here working out, we're training, you know, lifting, doing all these things, um, sacrificing time to be in, the, you know, be here. Or, you know, it's just, it's just no better feeling than when, you know, people are winning and, and you see people winning, and you see people doing good and you see results happening. So that's, uh, that's what makes me happy. Obviously, sacks aren't everything, but in talking to Zach last week, like he said, it, it is important to him to get those sacks, to get yeah. those sacks numbers. How do you, how do you look at that in terms of you know just getting pressure versus getting those sacks? Um, the finer things, the little details. Um, just when you're going out there trying to uh, rush, it's, not, it's rushing is an art, and that's what Coach Jay said. You know, rushing is a uh, it's not just not just something you just go out there and do. You know, you got you got to plan with it. It's an art with it. So. You know, the sacks do mean something. When we're going out there, and we're, um, we're you know we're hitting our moves and we're doing our moves, trying to you know trying to make a difference in the game. Um, when we're not getting there, you know, you put all that work in the whole week, and then <laughs> you know you go out there and you like this second, or you you know a point millisecond, you know too too uh, slow to get the sack. That that kind of you know means something. So I just think the biggest thing we pay attention to this year is you know. How can we turn our the pressures into sacks? You know, how can we 
and we shave off those those little seconds that we were too late for the quarterbacks. But I think you know I think we're doing pretty good this year. Uh, we're picking up our you know our rushing. You know we're picking up our our slack, and um, the sacks are, are the pressure is definitely turning into sacks now. So we just gotta keep putting them in the bank, keep stacking them, and keep getting better. And we got the best O line in the country here, you know, to go against. I feel like, in my opinion, so I feel like there's no reason we shouldn't go out there and you know turn those pressures into sacks. And we'll wrap up with third row right, Tim May, Letterman Row. Uh, Terry, do you feel like uh, I'm not trying to give you the big head here, but do you feel like you're sort of a bonus coming out at the right time? <laughs> For this Ohio State defense and, and for this team, I mean, do you, are you looking at it a little bit like that? I mean, yeah, I got you. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, I always think I give my team a different, you know, a different aspect in the game. Um, so, yeah, I think I think in a, in a sense it's a bonus. Um, it's always better, you know, to have everybody to go to war. And I think it's just I'm. It's just an extra. It's no fall off when I, you know, when when I'm coming in, whether I'm starting or whether I'm coming off the bench. So, I just know. Whoever I'm coming in after, I'm, I'm a, you know, match his intensity. Or I'm a match his level of fire. So, I'm, I, I don't know if I look at it as a bonus, but it's definitely, you know, a, a one up um, when I'm coming in, and you know, I'm, I'm gonna give everything I got for the team. I'm gonna give everything, uh, every ounce of what I have in me, uh, whether it's you know puffing down or you know I'm squeezing the tackle or if I'm chasing the quarterback, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing it all. So, yeah, I think, I think it does help, you know, when I come in, the guys know. Uh, they're not coming out, and it's not going to be like a drop off. And we're, and we're coming in. And we're we're going to keep the same intensity and keep the same and keep the tackle that we're going against tired, because it, it's not going to be anything different than when I come in. And one other quickie, uh, this is going to sound maybe like a weird question, but how much respect do you have for quarterbacks, and so like CJ coming mm -hmm. on? You know, you were just talking a while ago about the competition, you know, for, for sacks, etc. Mm -hmm. You know, on a pass play, that's what you're that's what you're after. Yeah. You got to contain, but that's what you're yeah. after. He's got. He's reading the defense. He's remembering the play, and mm -hmm. then he's got a guy like you <laughs> mm -hmm. breathing down his neck. I mean, what is the respect factor, I guess, among you guys for the guys that play the quarterback position? Uh, for CJ, I definitely got uh, a lot of respect for him. You know, he comes in every day, works hard. Um, his, his leadership is is going through the roof. You can see it uh, in the way he carries himself, in the way he talks to the people, the way he talks to us. Um, he's definitely you know, changed his mentality. I could, you could just see it in him. Uh, so yeah, I definitely got the respect from him, you know, to sit in there. Um, he 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 trains and he he prepares for the moment, and you know you could just can't do nothing but just sit there and just you know just be happy that he's uh, succeeding. He's worked hard, you know. He's grinded. Uh, he we he even had some talks, you know, about his mentality and you know how it's changed and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I got the utmost respect for CJ. You know how you can sit in there and you, you see his game. It's only it's been going up each week. So, yeah, I definitely got a lot of respect for him. When did that interaction with you guys with defensive players start with him? Did he? Oh, well, they, we in the same locker room. Like yeah. I sit, my locker is probably like five lockers down from him. So we always talk, we always chat. But you know, he's always like, oh, what do you see on the defense? You know, like or what 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 do you think we could do different? Or you know, he even if it's an off the field situation, you know. But he's always uh, the one you know that's trying to. Um, balance the situation out and, you know, get to the, you know, help the uh, situation. So his, I'm just, the uh, point of the situation is his leadership is just definitely just went through the roof. And I could definitely tell um, by, you know, just interacting with him. We've got time for just a couple quickies. Sorry about that. Uh, third row middle, Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Tyreek, is that a Cavs sweatshirt? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the 2-2 two two start? Oh, man. I love it. I love the Cavs. Um, I actually, <laughs> I actually uh, played with uh, Evan Evan Mobley when I was younger. Yeah, when I was, grew up in Corona. So yeah, it's just crazy to just watch him today and just you know see him, you know playing, you know see the guys and see the team I I love and see guys I play with on the team. So yeah, I was just watching them. I watched the game against the the Hawks, and I was just proud. I was just sitting there like, man, like look how far this team has come. I'm um still waiting for a championship. You know I'm I'm gonna be there. I'm always Cavs till I, till I die. So Cavs, Cleveland, anything till I die. So yeah. Can you explain that a little more. When did you play with him? Um. So yeah. I, uh, growing up in California, um, I played basketball AU basketball, and I actually played with uh, Evan Mobley and Isaiah Mobley when I was younger. When we grew up in the same area, so it's just crazy. I was watching on TV like maybe two years ago. I seen he was like the number one recruit. I'm like, man, that's crazy. So just a small world. Um. So yeah, but. I'm a Cavs fan until I die, like I said. 
So yeah, I'm a, you know I'm always rock my Cavs gear, and I'm happy how the team's doing right now. Standing right behind him, Colin Gay from the rivals. Terry, you mentioned the art of rushing the quarterback, the art of pressures, and I'm curious as an older guy, was that something that you saw was inherent in Jack and JT, or is that something that they kind of had to learn? Uh, yeah, it's definitely something that they had to learn. I think everybody when they come here, um, everybody still has that you know that high school that high school flavor to them. And, um, it just takes a little bit to you know knock off that. But yeah, I think now you know where they're at now, they definitely in, you know bought into the system we we have and the art of pass rushing. So yeah, and then you could definitely see it in their play. Their plays went through the roof tremendously since they came here. You know just the moves they're doing. You know the first step they have. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely an art, and I think they're definitely getting it. Was that developed quicker, more, um, quicker than you thought it would be? Or, or did it yeah, be no, they're definitely, yeah, definitely developing very quick. Um, they they don't take long to to, to get um, what, we're, what we're teaching, and it don't take long to put it on the field. You know, we take the meetings, and that's what Coach says, take the meetings to the field. So it's not very hard for them to take the meetings to the field. They're always on, on, uh, on their P's and Q's. Always trying to get better, always looking to get better, always asking questions. So, yeah, they're definitely getting it. Terry, thank you very no much. No problem, man.